Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Well today we're going to engage in something that is a complete waste of time, but you have to watch something on your phone while you're in the toilet, so here we are. Not surprisingly, there's been a ton of story leaks for Star Wars Episode 9, most of which are probably fake, but some of the rumours surrounding these leaks did pique my interest. Some of the rumours that Disney itself was the source of some of these leaks, and part of the reason that they're leaking them is they've filmed so many different versions of the ending, they want to kind of crowd test to see which one fans react to and then that will be the final version that they released. May or may not be true but I thought why don't we compile together some of the three most easily accessible and well-known leaks floating around on the internet and we can actually vote for which one we like and discuss the bits we like and the bits we don't like just in case this is true that they are actually trying to crowd test an ending. And let me point out I do not think any of these are particularly good so don't misinterpret my voting for one of these by saying it's a good version it's not a good version it's kind of like a a best of the worst type situation oh and obviously spoiler alert in case any of these are true if you want to go in without being spoiled and you really care about this next movie first of all what's wrong with you but secondly spoiler alert So this story takes place five years after the end of The Last Jedi, and interestingly, Kylo Ren has actually decentralized a lot of the First Order and is seen as a fairly decent kind of leader, which is an interesting turn for them to make. It kind of addresses one of the, the key problems that we've had, which is that the Empire is always portrayed as so bad, but when the good guys get their hands on the steering wheel, they usually drive into a tree. They've done it twice now. Perhaps they're better off just staying out of government entirely. I mean, the Emperor and the Empire have certainly done terrible things but they're at least somewhat efficient in running the galaxy so Kylo Ren being seen as a benevolent ruler is an interesting turn to take but of course Rey, Finn, Poe and Leia are still kind of stuck in the Empire bad because reasons mindset and they're receiving information from General Hux who's leaking information to the resistance in an effort to try to bring down Kylo and this information sends them out into the unknown regions of the galaxy where they run into what's described as a female prodigy. Perhaps it's played by this actress, she's been cast as somebody. Odd choice, I mean why would you introduce a female prodigy this late in the game? Especially considering we already have a female prodigy in Rey. I mean we've already got our Mary Sue quota, we don't need any more Mary Sues. Which then leads them to a planet made entirely out of water where there's an underwater base built by the First Order that has like a slave labour force of some of the civilizations that have been conquered by the First Order. And Rey says to all of them, hey you know what, you should actually rebel against the First Order. And apparently they're all like, oh yeah, great idea, it never occurred to us while we're being slaves that we should actually rebel. What a revolutionary thought, no one's ever thought of that before. And they do, in effect, magically respawning the Resistance army, considering that they got completely wiped out in The Last Jedi, and there was only like a dozen people left alive out of the thousand or so people at the beginning of that movie, effectively completely wiping out the Resistance. But now they magically respawn because they found this underwater city. Now throughout this Rey and Kylo are still having their sort of force based Skype chats but force users from throughout the galaxy are flocking towards Rey and the big reveal in the movie is that one of these kids is turns out to be Rey's child. What? Yeah, I didn't know she even had a boyfriend or anything before Finn showed up to get her and I guess she didn't really have time to actually make a baby with Finn throughout the courses of the first, the, the Force Awakens. How she has a kid? Nobody knows. But upon learning this, Kylo Ren apparently gets very, very angry and he tries to do what he failed to do in the last two movies, which is kill Rey and that's all the leak says. So this is by far the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. It probably isn't real because, I mean, what's the deal with the female prodigy? They introduce her in the story and then there's no mention of her again. Same with Ray's kid. What's the deal with that? Uh, I mean, who's the father of that kid? I don't know. And I don't like how the resistance is uh, respawned in this way. And also there's no mention of Palpatine. So it's probably not real. But the one thing that I do like out of this that Disney might want to consider is the idea of Kylo Ren being a benevolent ruler. As I've said, it addresses one of the problems that we've had that the good guys don't seem to be very good at running the galaxy. So that's that's at least one tick for this particular plot leak.
The movie starts with Ray in search of a MacGuffin because we all know J.J. Abrams loves his MacGuffins. And this is a MacGuffin that will stop the First Order. And it is some type of code in the old Death Star. Nobody knows exactly what this code does, but apparently it will defeat the Empire once and for all. Now Kylo knows that Ray is looking for this MacGuffin, but he's kind of got bigger fish to fry at the moment. Namely, the Knights of Ren back from their crusade in the outer regions, who are now being led by Matt Smith, who has replaced Kylo Ren as leader of the Knights of Ren and apparently also wants to replace him as the leader of the First Order. So Kylo Ren goes to a dark side oracle who tells him that the Knights of Ren are not a threat to his power but the real threat to his power is Rey and that she will eventually erase everything he has done from history. And this uh, seems to trigger sort of like a, a chase movie from this point where we've got Kylo Ren chasing after Rey trying to catch up with her but then there's the Knights of Ren trying to chase after and catch up to Kylo and it culminates with Kylo killing the Knights of Ren, either with or without Rey's help is not made clear. Presumably Matt Smith's character dies in this as well since there's no mention of him in the leak again. And Rey tries one last time to turn Kylo to the light side and he refuses because he's come too far. He can't turn back now. Then things get classic J.J. Abrams inconsistent, which leads me to think that part of this might actually be genuine because it does sound like something that J.J. Abrams would do. Rey loses the fight with Kylo, which immediately raises the question, why? She defeated him already back in the first movie, why can't she do it again? Sure, he had an injury back then, he doesn't have an injury now, but her skills have also grown over the course of the movie, so the difference between them should still be the same, she should still be able to beat him. I mean, if these were their skill levels in the first movie, but his injuries took him down to this level, that's how she beat him. But if now he's healthy as a horse, but her skill levels have grown, still same difference, she should still be able to win, right? And and then after she is unable to defeat Kylo Ren, guess what she does? She raises the Death Star from the ocean with the Force. So why did she lose the fight again? I mean, if she can do that, why does she even need to lightsaber fight? She could just flick him into the sun. See what I mean when I say this sounds like the kind of thing that J.J. Abrams would do? It's the kind of thing where he would just be like, whoa, that'd be cool. Let's just throw it in. Let's not worry about how it affects the universe, kind of like the magic blood in Star Trek Into Dark. So then Rey decides to sacrifice herself to become a shield for the antenna on the Death Star, whatever that means. Like, does she die and her, like, energy cloaks it and shields it? Or does she, like, step in front of a laser blast that's going to destroy it, sacrificing it? I don't know, but somehow she becomes a shield for the antenna. And the antenna then broadcasts the legend of Luke Skywalker to the galaxy. Hence the name of the movie, The Rise of Skywalker. It's the legend of Skywalker. And and Poe apparently says his message will continue to be heard a long time from now in galaxies far, far away. So the big MacGuffin, the big ultimate weapon to defeat evil is the legend of Luke inspiring people forever. Well, isn't that clever? It's a metaphor. That lion, rail splitting, theater going freak. So this plot leak seems incomplete. I mean, why does it have Matt Smith taking over as the leader of the Knights of Ren and trying to replace Kylo as Supreme Leader of the First Order just to have him killed later anyway? I mean, what's the point of having him then? I mean, wouldn't it be better to have him as being like a clone of Palpatine, a younger version of Palpatine? In fact, Palpatine isn't even mentioned in this leak. So who knows how much of this could be true and couldn't be. But while the idea of the legend of Luke being like herds throughout the galaxies far, far away. While that sounds nice and it sounds kind of poetic. Again, it's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. It just raises too many questions. I mean, why couldn't Kylo stop the signal? Even if Rey is like shielding it somehow so that he can't shoot it or blow it up. I mean, it's an antenna. Can't he like unplug it? Can't he cut off the power? Uh, couldn't he block the signal somehow so that it doesn't leave the planet and it just bounces off the atmosphere? Uh, what about scramblers? Couldn't he scramble the signal so that if people try to listen to it, it just turns to static? I mean, even if the signal did go out and everyone hears it perfectly, why would they even care? I mean, remember in The Last Jedi, the Resistance called for help and nobody answered. So why would an old recording message of, of Luke now get any different of a response from people as the message they sent out last movie? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't like it. It might sound nice, it might sound poetic, but it just raises too many questions. And I definitely don't like how Rey is all of a sudden unable to beat Kylo in a lightsaber fight, but then she can raise the Death Star. It's just, it's silly.
So this one starts out with uh, Leia having taken over the Jedi training for Rey since Luke's dead. Now, of course, you can point out that Leia wasn't actually a Jedi, so how much knowledge would she really have to pass on? But, I mean, I guess what other option does she have at this point? I mean, there are no other Jedis left. Luke could come back as a Force ghost, but apparently he's not interested in training anyone even as a ghost. So I guess it's down to Leia. And in this movie, there's, there's still MacGuffins, but Kylo is looking for a MacGuffin as well. And his MacGuffin leads him into the unknown regions where he finds Palpatine, who is still alive, somehow, and has a fleet of Star Destroyers, somehow, each of which is fitted with Death Star tech, somehow, which collectively makes the whole fleet capable of destroying a planet, making the entire fleet yet another Death Star, because yeah, we haven't seen enough Death Stars in Star Wars, right? And this fleet is manned by not regular stormtroopers, but Sith troopers, who we saw released at the San Diego Comic Con, and I'm sure they'll be exactly the same as regular troopers, only that they're red. So while Kylo Ren is off doing his MacGuffin mission to find Palpatine, Leia sends Rey off on her MacGuffin mission to go meet up with Lando so that she can get her MacGuffin, which is a knife that has an inscription on it that C-3PO is unable to translate. When suddenly Kylo attacks, and in all the chaos he steals the knife, and he steals C-3PO, and he takes off. And he manages to alter C-3PO's programming enough so that he can translate the knife, and it turns out that this knife was the knife that was used to kill Rey's nobody parents. With the big reveal being that while Rey's parents were nobodies, her grandparent was a somebody, and her grandfather is Pal. And then everybody ends up in Endor, and Rey and Kylo have another fight on the Death Star wreckage, in which Rey taps into the dark side and defeats him, not killing him, but leaving him for dead. Because of course in Star Wars, whenever you leave someone for dead rather than just finishing them off, it never comes back to bite you in the ass. And here is where the real weirdness kicks in, because Kylo, bloodied and beaten at this point, right on the edge of death, then suddenly gets a vision of his dead father, Han Solo. How? How can Han Solo appear to Kylo when he wasn't a Jedi? Isn't the whole Jedi ghost thing just a Jedi thing? How can he get a vision of Han Solo? I don't know, but apparently he does. I mean, shouldn't it be Anakin who appears to Kylo and speaks to him and tries to convince him to turn back to the light? Especially considering how he sort of idolizes Vader. It'd be much more powerful to have that. It'd make a lot more sense too, but nope, Han does it and tells him, hey, you should be a good guy again. And while Kylo Ren is getting his own little vision, Rey also gets one from Luke who gives her a speech and tells her that she needs to finish what he started and she needs to destroy the Emperor. Hey, remember in uh, Empire Strikes Back when Vader told Luke that Palpatine had foreseen that Luke was able to destroy him, but then Anakin turned out to be the one to take him down, not Luke, implying that the battle between Luke and the Emperor actually isn't over yet? Well, if you're gonna use Luke as a Force Ghost, then wouldn't it make more sense if Palpatine was also a Force Ghost, so that Luke and the Emperor could do battle in like the realm of the Force, perhaps both of them dying in the process, thus finally fulfilling what was said back in Empire Strikes Back of Luke being the one to ultimately destroy the Emperor? Wouldn't that make more sense than Luke just telling Rey to do it? Yes, I'm aware that only the Jedi are able to merge back with the Force when they die, granting them the ability to appear as Force ghosts, while the Sith are only supposed to just die and just disappear, which is why the Sith are so obsessed with living forever, because they have no afterlife. But they could easily get around this by saying that this is a skill that only Palpatine has been able to figure out, and that he refused to share this knowledge with anyone else. Plus, there are times in the expanded lore when former Sith Lords have been able to reappear for brief periods. So yeah, I just don't really think it's it's supposed to be Rey's destiny to defeat the Emperor. She doesn't even know who he is. She he has no history with him. Actually, come to think of it, remember how Kylo Ren was talking to Vader's mask and he said, I will finish what you started? Well, if Palpatine is still around, for him to finish what Vader started, he would need to finish off killing Palpatine, right? Wouldn't that actually make a whole lot more sense? I mean, the shadow of Vader has like loomed over all of these movies. Shouldn't it finally come to a head here at this final of the nine movies or whatever? <sighs> anyway, anyway, back to the leak. Rey then meets up with the rest of the Resistance fleet and they do battle with the Sith fleet and she busts in on the Emperor's throne room because they're obviously remaking Return of the Jedi at this point. Kylo Ren also shows up and Rey and Kylo team up to fight Palpatine and Luke and Leia's force ghosts appear to help take him down. So at least Luke in this leak has a small part to play in helping to defeat the Emperor. I mean, so I guess when Palpatine said, Luke can destroy me, what he really meant to say was he could be destroyed by the son of Princess 
Princess Leia and a nobody and two ghosts all attacking him at once. Yeah, that, that must have been what he actually meant to say. Easy mistake to make there. But they do, they defeat him, and it's unclear whether Kylo survives this battle or not. But apparently the movie ends with Rey burying Luke's lightsaber at the Lars farm on Tatooine and staring out at the dual sunset like Luke Skywalker. Why she's doing this when she's not actually a Skywalker? There's no mention of that in this leak. Why she would even bury Luke's lightsaber at all, considering that it's specifically called out to her in The Force Awakens. Why she wouldn't keep it and like put it in a museum or something, or you know, build a new Jedi temple and, and put it in the museum section of the archives of the Jedi temple. I mean, why would you just bury it in the dirt? That's almost as insulting as Luke just throwing it off a cliff. So yes, I, I don't like this plot leak either, but I definitely prefer it to Rey and Kylo fighting over an antenna. It at least gives Luke a little bit something meaningful to contribute, and it kinda does bring things full circle with the story, but again, if we're bringing in Force Ghosts to help defeat Palpatine for good, why not have something like Anakin's ghost representing the old Republic generation, Luke's ghost representing the original trilogy generation, and Kylo Ren could be representing the, the new generation, you got three generations of Skywalker family there, all three of them working together to take down Palpatine, I mean, it's like poetry, it rhymes. So this leak's not very good, it's certainly not perfect, but it's probably the best of the worst. So if Disney is watching, some of the ideas I like is Kylo being a benevolent ruler, the force ghost of Luke helping to defeat Palpatine, and not having Rey lose a fight to Kylo all of a sudden just doesn't work. You've already made that Mary Sue bed, you have to lay in it now. So vote in the top right corner right here for which of the three story leaks you like the most, which is the best of the worst, and put down in the comment section below uh, which particular story elements you kind of like. Who knows, I mean, if, if Disney is actually looking for feedback online, maybe we can actually give some. I am Bandit, this is Bandit Incorporated. Until next time, I will see you guys in the comments.